get underway a big thank you and a hello to all the new subscribers and for the people who do donate to the channel thank you so much indeed what is happening in the news we're back in wuhan it's not about covid19 but it is about sinking submarines or where have they gone let's read some of the articles first of all are you ready Let's do it. A Chinese nuclear-powered attack submarine sank in its dock earlier this year while under construction in a major setback for the Chinese military, according to US defense officials. I think most people around the world do know where Wuhan is, but for the benefit of the doubt, here it is on the map. And it's miles away from the coast. And this is sort of like China's PLA, the Palestinian, no, the People's Liberation Army, where they build, maintain about 80% of the army from, you could say, um, Yingchang, you can see on the map here as well, all the way to Hanzhou, Shanghai, 80%. So if the Free Gorge did go down, then you would say a lot of the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, would, well, um, um, would vanish, so to speak. Let's continue with the article. Satellite images taken in June show what appear to be floating salvage cranes at the berth in Wuhan, where a month previously a vessel had been seen. Beijing has not confirmed these reports. I'm going to give you some audio for about a minute or so related to this so you can understand it more if you haven't caught up already with this in the news. I'll be back. Embarrassment as China's newest nuclear-powered submarine sinks in Wuhan shipyard in months-long Navy cover-up. A high-tech nuclear-powered Chinese submarine has sunk, with the Communist Party covering it up for months, according to US officials. The Chinese Navy was reportedly left desperately trying to cover up the incident and stop foreign governments from discovering the sub's wreckage. The attack submarine was the first of its new Ju-class line of vessels, characterized by an X shape at its head, being built in a Wuhan shipyard. It's not surprising that the PLA Navy would try to conceal the fact that their new first-in-class nuclear-powered attack submarine sank pierside, said the senior US defense official. Satellite imagery captured by Maxar Technologies showed the sub docked in the shipyard in March. Later photos taken in June revealed the nuclear sub never returned to the Wuhan dock. But there have been some reports from China of denial. One state-affiliated media called Reports on China posted this on Twitter. And you can read, nuclear subs are not and have never been built in Wuhan. The waters there is way too shallow. Okay, this is a gentleman, again, you can see here, Andy Borham, and he's very proud to be an official Wu Mao. You can buy these if you want. I will, Andy, give you an award, and the award comes from Nanning, and it's full of poop. How can we debunk Andy? It's quite simple. He hasn't done his research. It took me five minutes to find this out. The width of the river, the Yangtze River, where this naval base is in Wuhan, is round about 2,600 metres across, 800 metres, 2,600 feet, 800 metres. More than, the depth is more than 100 feet 30 meters. Now, if you go into any common submarine, how much depth does it need to float? In general, I know there's different classes, but this is not a huge one. It's sort of like an average size one. And there you can see 30 meters. So Andy, lying. Now, if you've ever been near enough from um, Wuhan all the way to Shanghai by road, you can do it. I have done it years and years and years ago. It took a long time. You can see a lot, and I mean a lot, of naval bases. It's very well hidden from, you could say, 
the eye and how a army could invade when the naval bases are inland as far as you could say Wuhan. I don't think it can go much further. One, there's lots of um, dams in the way, like the Free Gorges. So Andy, my lovely Andy, who loves the CCP, who is a traitor to his own country, well, sorry, my friend, you've been debunked. What else has been happening in the news is this. <laughs> According to some sources, China has launched an intercontinental ballistic missile with a range of about 12,000 kilometers. The DF-41 is China's longest range missile capable of speeds up to Mark 25, 25 and is designed to carry up to 10 nuclear warheads. The missile was launched to an area near French Polynesia Islands in the South Pacific Ocean. And here you can actually see the trajectory of the actual missile. It's quite common what China does. They will deny and they will deny by being silent and they won't say anything and sweep it under the carpet, let it go. And uh, they will employ um, a lot of people like Andy near enough as satellites to spread their news. So if anything comes back, it will be to them, it won't be to the CCP, it won't be to state media. These people will get hit. We call them in the trade satellites. They were put in all the propaganda, but a lot of the time, even though they're a professional, um, they don't do the attention to detail. In fact, it's quite minimal. And they will only do one side of the argument, which is really annoying. And so it is subjective. What I do is the other side, and that makes it objective because now you have two sides of the story, and that's what I'm trying to influence it here. So please do like, subscribe, and share if you got to the very end of the video. Thank you very much for it. And uh, do keep out. I make videos near enough every day. Not every day, but near enough every day, mostly about China. But we do try to do the Asia show. We do things about um, Cambodia and Thailand, when I go there on vacation, maybe two, three, four times a year. That's it. Let's leave it with that. And do be careful of what the Chinese state media influence you in the West on Western media. But how come, a question for you to leave you with, how come Western media cannot put their media on China's media? They're not allowed to. One rule for China, another rule for the rest of the world. It's a little bit unfair. Welcome to China. My name is James. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.